am a disciple who will disciple others. So I give myself to accurate interpretation of the truth. God counts on me in my generation to make him known. I take my ministry as a revealer of Jesus seriously. I give myself, I pay attention in the dividing of God's word. For lives of men are hinged on my decision to pay attention and understand. I give myself, I give myself to the truth of God's word. I am a minister of reconciliation. I will give myself to the word of God. Second Corinthians 13. We are in verse 14. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Meaning, when we are talking about grace, we are talking about the grace that is of our Lord Jesus Christ. Talking about the activity of what God, Jesus did. He said the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is the love of God. Meaning, how do I know? How do I know the love of God? The love of God is found in what Jesus did. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is the love of God. We've said if you try to look for the love of God outside of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, you will be mistaken. Praise the Lord. We have also said that the totality of the message of what we call the love of God or the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is that the Holy Spirit will live in you. The sweet fellowship of the... What is the end goal of what God desires for man? That man will become the temple of God. So man and God will now have what? Fellowship. Praise the Lord. What is God's desire? Man was running. Man hated God. Man had a heart reprobate, angry against God. And God is coming. So really, it's not that we chase God. It's God chasing us. Praise the Lord. Church, praise the Lord. Even that thing that you call you chasing the Lord, it is because God has aided men to pray to aid you to chase the Lord. It's because God has aided men to preach that you may understand. So it is actually God working in you what to do and we of his good pleasure. It, I'm saying it is God that is chasing you. Praise God. Praise God. Why? Man was the one that was reprobate. Man was the one that was angry. Man was the one that needed, didn't want anything to do with God. It was man that was hiding. You see that in the book of Genesis. I heard your voice in the midst of the garden and I hid myself. It has always been a man. What has God, then what did God want to do? God gave a promise. Someone say a promise. What is the promise? It's written for you there in Ezekiel 36, 26. Ezekiel 36, 26. If you are there, let us know. Because the, these books are saying the same thing. Ezekiel 36, verse 26. What is there for us? Are you there? Ezekiel 36, 26. Are you there now? Okay, I'll wait for you. Ezekiel 36, 26. Are you there now? Yes. All right, what does he say there? It says to us there, a new heart. Also, will I give unto you, I mean a new spirit. I will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of... So what will God do? What was the problem with man? Man's heart. What did God promise he would do? He would give us a new heart. What did he mean by a new heart? A new spirit. So what does that mean? Uh, Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3 verse 5. You must understand what is happening 
in, in this journey so you can explain it clearly say I am a new creation I have a new heart I have a good conscience look at Hebrew and Titus 3 verse 5 well, verse 4, but after that the kindness and the love of God has appeared. Someone say the love of God. Love God. Our Savior. Who is God? Saves. What does our God do? Saves. What does our God do? Saves. He saves. What did he come to save from? He came to save man from himself. Praise the Lord. So praise the Lord. Okay, where does the devil come into play? The devil takes advantage of man staying in the place where which is against God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Look at what he says there. He says, after the kindness and the love of God, our Savior towards man appeared. How would you know that God is kind? If you look at any other place but the gospel, you will miss the kindness of God. Praise the Lord. The kindness and the love of God is in the gospel. Amen. Amen. Church, amen. Amen. Church, amen. 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 He says, our Savior toward man appeared, not by the works of righteousness. Titus 3 5. Not by the works of righteousness which he had done, but according to his mercy. mercy. Who is your God? Amen. Merciful. The verse before says, our God is Savior. Now you are saying that he is. Merciful. Write these things about God because that God now lives to you. Hallelujah. So you will give your life that others are saved. Mm. Is that making sense? Meaning that you, your life makes sense in that you are giving it to the gospel that others may be saved. Why? God lives in you. Mm. The kindness of God is on the inside of you. Say the kindness, the kindness of, God of God is on the inside of you. Inside say, I will make my life count. My life. Let me say something to you. Your life counts. Yeah. Living your life for Jesus. Man. See, listen, outside of this box that we are in, that looks like a local church, when you get outside, a lot of people will tell you what makes your life count. Mm. But know the truth. You shall know the truth. And the truth will do what? Right, yeah. The truth is that your life counts in that you would give your life for this gospel. And that's why you should wonder why somebody like Paul who go and preach the gospel, they will beat him. He will die. He will wake up from that death and go back to the place where they beat him to preach that same gospel. Why? He had found a father, a lover, a God that saved him when he was persecuting God. And so he lived his life to serve that God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And he, today, his life counts. Hallelujah. His life counts. Say, my life will count. I will use my life. I will give my life as an offering. As an offering that other men will come to know Jesus. Look at Titus chapter 3, look at verse 5. Not according to the works of righteousness. God is saying the promise I promised that you see in Ezekiel 6 verse 26. That I will give a new heart and a new spirit. That promise is not based on what you will do. Are you hearing me? Not by works of righteous. Not by works of Church, are we here together? Not by works of righteousness. Please, I want you to pay attention. Because if you don't know it, how can you teach it? How can you explain it? Remember, God said, go into the world and make disciples of how many men? All men. So anytime you come around, pay attention because you are the disciple that will disciple others. Praise the Lord. Church, praise the Lord. Look at it. Not by the works of righteousness, which we have done. So it's not by what we did that He promised to save us. It's not by what we did that He promised to save us. We are saved because we receive what he did, not by the works of righteousness. And you know, like I always say, a lot of people think that they have to do a lot of things. Right? Is there a place for works in our kingdom? Yes. But for in our kingdom, we don't work so that God will save us. We are saved. That's why we work. Amen. Amen. Not by works of righteousness. Praise God. How many people you got your son name today? Right? Father? Right? Uh, uh, 
Sunday, right? You know, you got I bogo, open job it. You got it by something that you did. No. Amen. Amen. Even though they are married amongst us, you got your son in by receiving it from somebody. Mm. Praise the Lord. Mm. So you cannot say, I see, this is what I did to make me a Baba Lola. I will be wrong. Rather, I can now say, okay, Baba Lola behave like this. Because I am a Baba Lola, we act this way. Mm. Are you getting it? Not by works of righteousness. So I didn't do anything to become a Baba Lola. But now that I'm a Baba Lola, we live by certain set of rules. Praise the Lord. So if you see a rude and a grumpy person, and you see the person with Babadola, it can never be. Because we were not raised that way. Yeah. Are you hearing it? So, 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 however, we don't say we are not rude and grumpy as Babadola because we want to be, we want to stay or be Babadola. We are already Babadola. Are you getting it now? That is the Christian faith and the Christian walk. It's not by the works of what I do. But now that I'm in the faith, I live this way because of who I am. Who are you? You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. What is your assignment? To spread, to ensure that other people can become temples like you. What is God interested in? Mobile temples. Praise the Lord. To praise the Lord, to praise the Lord, not by the works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy, He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Ghost. So when Ezekiel was saying, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit, how will that happen? By the Holy Spirit entering into your heart. So when the Holy Spirit enters into your heart, the Bible calls it washing. Amen and amen. What really happened? He took out the old nature and gave you a new nature. Praise God. What does the Bible call it? Washing. He now takes it to another level. He says regeneration. He brought out all that was in. Or let me say it this way. Darkness was in the heart of man and God introduced light into the heart of man. So by introducing light into the heart of man, darkness has escaped. Say, I don't follow the works of darkness. Because of my nature. Come, because of my nature. Because of my nature. So, say, I am washed. I am sanctified. Because of what Christ has done. Look at the Bible. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Amen. Alright. Are you there? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, we are looking at verse 11. So when you hear washing, it's the work of the Holy Ghost, but it did not literally wash. How many people write, you got saved, and when you got saved, if you were feeling water and detergent within you, no. It's just a figurative way to describe to you that you understand what happened. Amen? Amen. Alright, look at first. So who did the work? How did he do the work? By the person of the... Holy Spirit. What does the Holy Spirit do? Enter into your heart. That entering into your heart is called washing. So when we say, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So what is that blood of Jesus? The Spirit of God. Praise the Lord. Why did he say blood? Blood is the proof of life. Are you getting it now? Church, are you getting it now? So when we say the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, we are just saying, why? Because the blood, blood, the blood of someone is the proof of the person's life. So when the blood is in the person, the person is alive, the blood out is supposed to signify that the person is dead. But that blood now says, it means that blood is alive. That's the point. And so that blood that is alive, is actually the life of Christ that enters you and gives you a new nature. Praise God. Are you seeing the figurative language? Some people say, Moses, why do you make it this difficult? Why? When communicating with people, you can only talk at the level that they would understand. Yeah. That's why you realize that when you have dreams, you have dreams around the things you can understand. Praise the Lord. Church, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why, for example, Peter is hungry and he has a vision. What does he see? Food. Mm -hmm. What he can relate with. 
Praise the Lord. Pharaoh, for example, we see Pharaoh. What's happening to Pharaoh? Pharaoh has a dream. What does he see? A big cow swallowing a small cow. Why? You know, in, and that is to talk about the economy. Why? That's what Pharaoh could understand at his level. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If it was maybe brass or maybe the division would have maybe been a big, maybe corporate house. Mm. Swallowing up, you know, another corporate house. He would get it at ah. Praise God. Church, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen and amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, if it's for some like Brother Brother Victory, we are going to see a vision of soft plantain. It is to show you prosperity is coming. Praise God. My point is that God will speak to you by the things you can relate with. That's the point. Even though we got there, I don't know. But uh, first Corinthians 6, verse 11. It says, And such were some of you. You were, you are washed. So what is the washing? The Holy Spirit entering you. But you are sanctified. What sanctified you? Not a new word. The fact that you are washed makes it that you are sanctified. What does it mean to be sanctified? To be set apart. Why are you set apart? You are set apart because you are now the temple of the Holy Spirit. What makes you different from others? Other people don't have the temple of the... Other people are not the temple of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. So praise the Lord. So say, I am different. I am different. Say, I am different. I am different. So when you received the gospel, you received the Spirit. The Spirit, by receiving the Spirit, you were washed. Meaning you're new. By that receiving of the Spirit, you are sanctified. Meaning you are different from others. And this is what you need to understand. Like I said, people will not believe it. That by the time we are in the month of March, and all of that, we are actually going to, we are trying to talk about marriage and relationships. But I always tell people, I will not lie to you. If we just say, give me a flower, give me a rose, this and that, it won't help you. Have you not noticed that in this generation that they give the flowers the most are the, is the generation that people are actually divorcing the most? Are you not realizing that it's not flower that's the problem? It's revelation that's the problem. It's sad, but people like it. Kneel on the floor. Do, have you not seen pre-wedding photos and we have post-divorce parties? In this same generation. That should show you that that's not, that is not the answer. It might sell out. A group of people don't come and say, oh, this, I have nothing against people that do those things. I'm just saying that when we experience consistent failure in a particular approach, we must understand that that cannot be the answer. There is a deeper problem. Praise God. The deeper problem amongst, among, I said, I don't want to talk about marriage, among saints is people don't know who they are and how to apply the doctrine of who they are in practical everyday living. And so we must get to start to know, you're different. So you don't start copying the world. That's why I'm shouting you're sanctified. So you don't say, well, some people are, some people are. You are not some people are. You are born again. You are sanctified. The Spirit of God lives on the inside of you. Is it making sense now? Church, is it making sense now? So that might, that would mean automatically we do things differently. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 So everything around your Christian life has a purpose around it and it is connected to whom that you serve. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. So everything that I do, that you do, is to be for the glory of the Master because you are His born servant. Willingly. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just praise God. Hallelujah. And then when you start to take that mindset into marriage, take it into relationships, you become a better friend. You become a better employee, a better employer. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When you start hearing God is kind and God is saving, then we start to see your kindness towards your spouse. You start to see your kindness towards your friends. You start to see that kindness because what you are full of, you manifest. What did I just say? <laughs> so the more I remember in the teaching of the gospel that God is kind, it has an effect on me. Praise the Lord. Okay, let us live, let's, let's live married. What happened to you? First Corinthians 6 verse 11. Such were some of you, but you are washed. Are you verse 11? You are 
Okay, let's declare this together because remember that I said you would have to know how to make your faith work this year. Say, I'm washed. I am washed. Come on, say, I'm washed. I am washed. I am sanctified. I am justified. Look at the word they say. You. So what justified you? The same thing that sanctified you and the same thing that washed you. What does it mean to be justified? It means that you are you are not guilty of a charge. Mm. What was the charge against humanity? Mm. Death. Why? Romans 6, is it 23 or 25? The wages of sin is death. death. So when we say man is justified, we are saying that by the gospel, man, that thing that is weighing on man is off. Mm. Praise the Lord. That's why I say, the, the full version says, the wages of sin is death. But, what's the other part? The, the gift of God. Of God. The gift of God is what? Eternal the life. gift of God is what? Eternal life. eternal life. What is eternal life? Christ in me. Hallelujah. What does Christ in me mean? I am sanctified. What does sanctified mean? I am set apart. It must mean I am different, set apart, different, set apart onto a particular thing. So when you hear sanctification, there is purpose. Yes. Praise God. So praise God. I don't know if she's like, not done this, but she can say something like, the meat of this meat, she buys meat and says, all these goat heads is for every one of us. But she will set apart the goat leg and say the goat leg is for Brasodic. What has she done? She has set apart the goat leg. Amen. She has set apart. Why? For a particular purpose. Why? For in the setting apart, she brings pleasure to her Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise. So when I'm saying when you hear sanctify, there is purpose around it. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so God set us apart. Yeah. Right? How did he set us apart? By the Spirit of God. That would mean, you see, that God's leg that has been set apart by Stiola cannot compare itself with the God head. Because they are no more in the same class. Yeah. Praise God. So, uh, so whatever will be done with the goat leg, the goat head might not experience it. Mm -hmm. Why? The goat leg is set apart specifically for the use of our husband, brother, and so mm -hmm. right. Praise God. Hallelujah. You are set apart unto God. So the question will be, there is a, God has a purpose for setting you apart. Yeah. And that's why he gave you the spirit. Oh, yeah. And the point is that when you understand this about yourself, it starts to help you see that in my life is not a normal life. Mm. It's not a, I, my life has a reason behind it. And that, like I said to you, this is what gets men to live on. Mm. When you understand this, gets men to live on. You know what I'm talking about? What here? The grace of God. Look at First Corinthians 15 verse 10. First Corinthians 15, verse 10. We started by saying the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Now we are talking about this grace. We are saying it is the Spirit of God within you. What did that Spirit do? The Spirit sanctified you, meaning it set you apart, meaning that you've got a purpose. Now, what does this grace make you do? First Corinthians 15, verse 10. Are we there? What does it say? But by the grace of God. what will that grace be? The Spirit of God within Paul. So that will be the Spirit of God within you. So I mean, we here have the grace of God. I mean, we have the grace of God. So I am a constituent of the grace of God. It automatically means I am set apart. Amen. 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 I have a purpose to my life. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I get to know my purpose from my master. Amen. Amen. I don't determine or choose it. He chooses it. Amen. Amen. Just like, for example, the goat leg does not just say, you know what? I just want to know. If Brother Sadiq wants to eat that goat leg in the afternoon, he will. 
because that golden leg is sanctified for his use. While which every other goat head can be eaten anytime. What would be foolish of the goat leg to be doing? Looking at the goat head and saying, Why am I not being eaten in the morning? No, you are set apart for brother Sodi to come and eat when he likes. I get the point. First Corinthians 15 verse 10. That's why I'm trying to say, you are not anybody. You're different. Our ladies must know. Honestly, you will not believe. I'm talking about married relationships in parables. I'm entering my office of Moses. You, you would think, uh, it looks like, what is he really talking about? I am actually talking about what you don't think I'm talking about. Amen and amen. amen. So when you say now, for example, you want to enter, I said I will not go into marriage. You say you want to enter into marriage. You understand already before you enter, I am set apart. Yeah. If I am set apart, only a particular purpose of somebody higher than the marriage. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Church, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, if anybody, regardless of how I feel, anybody that will compromise the reason I am set apart, we don't even have that discussion. Mm -hmm. You know that I've already sorted the things out for you at a basic level. Why? Because you are, you are carrying over your head, I am set apart. I am not everybody. And why everybody might so no matter what's happening with everybody, you know, because we're in a, we're in a, a, a dispensation today, I want to be very, very honest with ourselves that women are pressured, yeah. they are pressured to marry. Yeah. You don't really see a man at 27 saying, Oh my god, my, 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 my time is going, my time is ticking, my wife, my eggs are increasing, all of a sudden. People don't say that, right? It's, it's men, it's women that have that pressure of family, pressure of this. By the time they're 26 or 27, there's already pressure. And when, please listen, wherever there is pressure, and the pressure is not well managed, mm -hmm. the compromise becomes the easiest way out. Yes. That is why we must emphasize purpose. Who are you? So you can actually say, no, not happening, not my way. But yes, this is the way. This is how we go. It, does, it has nothing to do with any other thing but first, I am loyal to my Lord and Master that set me apart. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Church, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. First, Corinthians 15. So there is a knowledge I must have. That's what I'm going with today. That knowledge is that I'm set apart. That knowledge I'm set apart unto God. What does that knowledge produce in me? Verse 10. But by the grace of God I am what I am. what I am and the grace of God bestowed upon me was not in Vain. did you see that there was not in Vain. so can the grace of God be in vain yes, so can the grace of God be in vain yes. meaning can the fact that you are set apart come for nothing at the end of the day yes. yeah so while God will not force you or put a gun to your head if we live our if we live our lives anyhow, we are actually doing that. He said the grace of God was not in vain, meaning there is a divine deposit in you that I will be the one to take. When you hear grace, it is what God has done. When you hear faith, it is what man does to take what God has done. So what God has done doesn't jump on anybody. Please write it down. This is where some people have passive Christianity. They say, whatever God will do, He will do. Right? No. Because your salvation already tells you that God saved you before you came. But for you to be saved, you have to hear the message and receive the message. So grace must be interacted with. If not, you will think nothing is happening in your life. And some people who don't recognize the grace of God, they're talking about faith all the time and they get into legalism. Mm. Thinking that faith is the tool to manipulate, move, or get God standing. That's not it. Faith is how I respond to what God has done. So when I hear what God has done, He has given the Spirit. Yeah. We now hear that that Spirit within me causes me to be set apart causes me to not keep a record of wrong. I say glory to God. I don't keep a record of wrong. What would be the wrong way to go about it? Sister, your life, you still did what you said you would not do again. You, you did it, you did it, and you are doing it again. Are you saying it? 
Does it make sense? Yeah. Should I use another example? I am saying that the grace of God is what you will you to. If you think that it's just going to happen in your life, it's not true. It says, the grace of God, look at it. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and the grace of God bestowed upon me was not in vain. How was it not in vain? I labored. More than they all. So when people say, oh Paul, a special apostle, especially this, especially that, what was Paul's own testimony? I, I labored. A lot, of people, a lot of people always come about and say, oh, especially Paul, that people call special, he said, I live off. So when some people were beaten, they ran away. Example, Mark. The time they got into persecution, they, they persecuted Mark. Mark ran away. So the next time they wanted to go for gospel outreach, Paul told Mark, you are not coming with me. Because the last time you ran away. And Barnabas said, no, you must come. That's where Barnabas and Paul had their first fight. So I'm saying to you, the fact is that not everybody will yield to the grace of God. Amen. Amen. But yielding to the grace of God has an impact on the millions of lives. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Church, praise God. Hallelujah. Look at it. Praise God. Hallelujah. For, look at, look at verse 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And this grace was not in vain, but bestowed upon me. For I labored not than them all. Even the, the fact that he labored, what did he say? Yet not. Is the grace that is working. Yeah. But what I am doing with this grace is that I am just. I am putting it out. I am stepping out. I am doing something. I am not making that grace latent. Yeah. How do I do that? I labor. Mm. I labor. Hallelujah. Yeah. John, I, I will be the one to labor. People always, I always tell people that, let me tell you something. When hands are laid on you, something happens to you. But do you know when you see it? You labor. Do you know when you see it? You labor. Mm. To see what is available. You, what do we, <laughs> praise God. Praise God. That's why you're going to be a believer. I'm saying by grace, I'm the children's cage. You know, God has done everything. You're just a pocket Christian. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. They say speaking to us, Braco Pomegranates, like a tambo, Colobicos, and a cheese cup of Batista. You didn't see nothing. You got to have that brass for this grace. Hey! No, praise God. You know, we just call it brass for this grace. But what did brass for this do? You did what? Hallelujah. How many on this book of talk is done? It has not read two minutes, your own is done all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Ataka, Glacabondus is done, it's done. Uh, I never. Look at Colossians 4. <laughs> you, you'll be surprised when I'm saying you will labor over soul. You will labor over saints. You will labor over friends. You will labor. Labor over people you are privileged to marry. Not say, listen, the first labor is that you might be someone that can be an helper and aider in their work. And then for them that they could be, you could together do the will of God. You will labor. Look at Colossians 4. Amen. Colossians 4. Amen and amen. 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 That friend that you are complaining about, have you labored in prayer over him? Has the love of God in you giving somebody five years of prayer? Mm. Praise God. Praise God. They came to me a, a, a while ago, about six years ago. They told me that one of our ministers, our friends, is doing something back right, right back to Nigeria. I said, let's give him six years of prayer. Everybody in the pastoral said, ah, wow. I said, bro, you want us to be doing guardians counseling that I will not, at the end of the day, men do what they want to do. But when we labor in prayer, we can influence their actual Yes, yes, word, word. So sometimes, before you always accuse and criticize and always have these many, many meetings, pray. Mm. Labor over people. Mm. They can have the privilege to cancel them. Mm. Wow. That is why a lot of times, I don't know that a lot of things that you say is not working. <laughs> you tell somebody, don't go left. <laughs> and the person says, yes, I get it. Left. It's not the way we should go. You turn back. Where did he go? Left. left. <laughs> Bro, pray. No, 
not because there is something wrong with you. It's because, see, that decision to go left is something that you need to labor for. Can you see? Praise God. Is this marriage and relationship and religion we're talking about? It will amaze you. Amen. Amen. Colossians 4, verse 12. Ephras, which is one of you, a servant of Christ. Who am I first? A servant. Who am I? A servant. a servant of Christ, meaning he serves the cause of Christ. See, I am a servant of Christ. When we read the Bible, we always think the Bible is talking about other people or things that are not applicable to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Church, praise God. You know, it gets a little more interesting when you realize that Jesus Christ left the whole ministry. To, to people that were 18, 19. The oldest of the disciples was like 20 something, and that's Peter because he's married. We he, he know he's married. 18, 19, you know, because there's no, nah, this is not for us, it's for me. No, 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 you labor. Mm. Say, I labor. I labor. Ephraim, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluted you. What is What do we find Ephraim doing? Laboring how? So how do we labor? What does the grace of God get me doing? Do, let, let me tell you something. Until you understand that people don't just do the word of God because you preach it. Mm -hmm. You won't see the import of praying. Wow. I'm saying the fact that you preach the word of God, the actual word of God, it means that it doesn't mean that people will do it. Why? People have minds. How many people have actually counseled somebody before? You've told your friend something before and it's very, very clear. It looks very, very clear to you. But they are saying the exact opposite. If you have friends, you have not before. Yes. Can you not see? Ah, oh, you can't see. Mm. You labor. Praise God. Hallelujah. Look at it. Ephraim, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluted you, always laboring fervently for you, eh? Right. What one way you will be a good dispenser of God's grace is to be a man of prayer. prayer. So when I am praying, I am doing what is called labor. That means laboring is called is being called putting the grace of God to work. So when I am praying, I am putting, I am not going to get grace. What am I doing? I am putting the grace of God to work. What, what is the effect? Where do we see the effect of the grace of God on others? Mm -hmm. Amen and amen. Talk yeah. amen and amen. amen. Talk amen and amen. amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Meaning like you would say, when it comes to relationships and marriage, marriages for example, mm -hmm. your emphasis, your joy, your glory, your assignment in that marriage, this specific marriage, is that you please, you aid the other person. It's not about you. If you don't know that it's not about you, you don't understand the message. So I don't want anybody here that is going to get married to say, you are talking about your wedding day, and you say it's your day because you're a woman. It's not your day. It's our day. Mm. Now, I mean your, our day is you and your husband. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Church, I know that you didn't get that. Amen? Amen. Because I, we need to change this culture that raises people to be self-centered. It's not your, why is it your day? The person that asks you, are you mad? <laughs> Did you know that there are over 3 billion women and he decided to risk his life to choose you? Mm. So why is it your day? Mm. Why is it your day? Mm. Are you, amen. 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 We must change our minds. Amen. Praise God. Amen. It's your day. Amen. It's not, why should you have... Why should it be that everything expensive? And that was my experience. I'm just telling you. Why, is, why should it be that everything expensive is about you, your head, your leg, your this? Mm -hmm. And then the other person is like, no, that is like uh, the, the, the leper of Neymar coming to his wedding. Why? <laughs> why? There's no need for that. It's big, and we don't see it that way, but fundamentally, we have started to build a culture in that marriage that puts the woman over the man. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like it. So at the end of the day, when things should go a particular way, the woman feels she has a right that must go away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Just praise God. I'm not against men. I'm not getting against women. All I'm just saying is the mindset. Are you seeing the way we have switched into marriage playfully? Mm -hmm. But we are talking doctrine. Yes. 
It's just that sometimes people don't know how to apply what we are saying. You are born again. Say yes, Pastor. You are sanctified. Pastor, tell me. You are filled with the Spirit. You are set apart of God. Yes. But it's your day. Come here. It's not your day. If I said, Pastor, that this is what I've been saying. Why is Pastor being petty? Hey, just so you know that this Spirit is working. Why is Pastor being petty? Why is this present down? Right? All I'm just trying to say to you is when it comes to who you are, it affects all we do. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And you know the risky thing? It's not popular. Mm-hmm. So it has to be excavated from the written word. So the fact is, the New Testament life is the other person's sentence. So when it is you centered, it cannot be a, the will of God. It's not about you. Anything grace. When? 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. Because when I say these things, like I'm always reminded, show scriptures. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9. Somebody might still doubt. Is he really talking about how I'm talking like Moses? Parables. You go and say, Ha! So that's what he's saying. <laughs> Second Corinthians 8, verse 9. Is someone learning something here today? Yes, sir. Second Corinthians 8, look at verse 9. For we. Okay, you're not there. 8, verse 9. We know the grace. For we. So we know. We have come to be aware yes. of a kind of grace. What kind of grace is this? The grace of our. So there is there is the grace of our Lord Jesus. That is the grace that saved you. So we know this grace. We know it. Amen. Amen. What did this grace teach us? Is there? For we know the grace of our Lord. For though he was rich, what is that rich there without sin? He didn't need. Anything. I don't know God is God all by himself. Yeah. That is the only qualification to make him God. Mm-hmm. That's why when you are a God and you need from man, you cannot be God. Mm-hmm. That's why the Bible says there are no gods mm-hmm. apart from our God. Mm-hmm. First Corinthians 8, 4, 5. There are no gods. There are things people call idols, but there are no gods. Mm-hmm. For you to need something from what you created, you can't be a God. Mm-hmm. That's why you hear in the beginning God so before the beginning began he existed that's what makes him god he has to be before hallelujah that's what makes it make sense to you that god does not need your offering god does not need your service it's men that need it and so your love of god is now shown in what you do to men how you give to men how you serve men are you getting what i'm saying the grace of Jesus Christ. Look at the second verse 8. Look at verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that he was rich. What do you see after he was rich? Yet. Yet. What else? What else? For, For who? What thing? For your sake. Who's sake? So it could not be his sake. So the grace of God is other people's sake minded. So when I say grace of God, I'm talking about other people. The impact of the grace of God is seen in what I do to other people. Praise God. Praise God. The grace of God working in your home, working in your relationship is what you will do with others. Are we together? Amen. Are we together? Yes. For your sake. That is the most important thing there because it shows you why he did what he did and what that grace is all about. For your sake, he became one. For your sake, he became one. You know what I'm saying? You know, this Jesus, it's, 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 this Jesus, this New Testament, I like it. It's just enjoyment. Galore. For your sake, meaning for other people, you will sacrifice. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. You are in a marriage, even maybe the man as it were, you're both born again, but you will sacrifice.
sacrifice. You will put him first. She, you are easy. That's for the sheep. For the man, he will sacrifice. He will put you first. The grace of God, I labor. You know the part of people like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You know what? After our pre-wedding photos, we are now doing the wedding, the wedding day, and you know what? I love all of those things. You will not believe it. I have pre-wedding photos. It's just not in the public space. I do. Because the way I'm talking to people, they say, ah, it seems like this pastor is not saying, no, I have. Many, many, I hope to be safe. You know, <laughs> yeah, I hope to be, you know, yeah, to, to ensure that it's appropriate for that year. <laughs> but I'm saying that that's not the focus. In fact, the reason, let me say it well, so the reason why we did the photo taking, when we did the photo taking, when we traveled in the cold, we got the photo taking, was I other people minded. Meaning the person, the other person. Praise God. Praise God. I am saying the moment we are in homes, we are Danny is seeking Bode's best interest. And Bode is seeking Danny's best interest. They are trying to outdo one another. Can you get a believer? Amen. Amen. So the grace of God is saying, you know, I'm gonna do you. So Danny's assignment in that marriage is what can I do to make him say wow again? Wow, no, eh, and you see, what should we not find Danny doing? Don't I say, I'm talking to you about as he grew with you know what? He didn't say hello, he didn't say hi, he didn't do this, he didn't do that, he didn't do this, he didn't do that. You're complaining, you're hungry, right? What will we find okay doing? He is a fucking thinking, hmm, what else can I do again? I'll just make that smile. How do I just put her first? Praise God. What are we exhibiting? That we know the grace of God. No, you see, the grace of God works in ministry, the way grace of God will work in your home. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Don't divide it. Yes. Praise God. Amen. All that people minded. That's why you will notice when you start to talk about practical everyday things. You will say, Masters, serve your masters. He will tell you, Masters, ensure that you serve uh, all that employees, servant, serve your masters. As if you are serving the Lord Christ. What is the focus of the master, the employee? The employer. Praise God. Hallelujah. You see, man, husband. What should you do? Love your wife. Wife, do the same thing too. It says, it says husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter. What does Paul say is the easiest thing you can encounter as a man in marriage? Bitterness. Bitterness. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Say, are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Did you hear what I just said? Yes, what is the first thing, if you're not careful, what is the thing that Paul said you can encounter? It's in the book of Colossians. Let me show you. So that we can start the conclusion. Because sometimes, you know, there's a thing I have that as I'm teaching this series, this is the fourth week. When is going to talk about these deep things in marriage? I have been since. Look at Colossians chapter, Colossians chapter 3. Look at verse 19. Paul already tells you before you enter. Bro, bro, bro. One of the first things you might encounter as a man with a woman is maybe the way she's made up, set up, how she does things, sometimes of all the way she goes about it. Look at that. That's why he gave the instruction. He gave the instruction because it's a temptation. Look at verse 19. Husbands, love your wife and be not bitter against them. Resentful. So, meaning is telling you there is a temptation head on. When you actually get married. But what will the grace of God do in that man? The grace of God will actually put the woman first. How will you put the woman first? Through patience, through love, through, through correcting in wisdom. So say correcting in wisdom. Correcting in wisdom. Just say correcting in wisdom. Correcting. You know I'm still growing in this thing sometimes. I just want to correct normally. And I just think, ah, stand up and sit down. Don't do that. I like, no, you should have done it better. My wife still is teaching me. So let you understand that you will forever continually grow in learning how to correct with wisdom. Sometimes I look like, ah, Abim Bola, why are you doing it that way? And you're just talking. And to Abim Bola, you might look, oh. Now, I'm talking about if they're married. Okay. So, I'm saying to you, when you're even as a man, there's a responsibility you have to know how to speak. Are you hearing me? That is what the grace of God in correcting. 
Praise the Lord. And if you correct somebody and the person at the level say that, you know, the way you corrected me, I don't like it. Apologize, retract, and do it better. Mm -hmm. Amen and amen. amen. Until you are where they grow. Are you hearing what we're saying? What are we talking about there? The grace of God. The grace of God, if you are putting the other person first, do you know that same God that person can upset you and you can actually apologize to him and say, you know what, let us just make peace and all those kind of things. You are acting like the one in whom Christ wills. He then is acting like a baby. Because he's like, no, leave me! For what is about to you? They know you can do. I know it. I see, listen to me. I know how to deal with people like you. I, I will not talk to you. See, listen, it's not malice, but don't talk to me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The grace of God puts the other person first. But I'm not Meaning that someone offends you. Listen to me. And that's why we pray for people. That's why we are praying tomorrow. Somebody offends you. It is you, it is pain. And the gospel is saying that you should be talking about the other person. Amen. Someone say you need prayer. Say I need prayer. prayer. Say I need prayer. I need yeah, I mean, how many people have been offended before? You've been hurt by somebody. Someone has done something wrong to you. How many people know at that point in time you're not thinking about the best interest of that other person? <laughs> how many people have thought bad things should happen to someone that did something evil to them before? Ah, that'd be the script. But yeah, yeah oh, praise God. So, why? Because that is the human nature. The human nature wants to get back. How do we know you are set apart? You are that one. And that's why prayer does that work. And that's why let me tell you something. This message and the message of the gospel is not just a message that we just can say glory kumbaya. We pray. What do we do? We pray. Church, what do we do? We pray. Listen, so that you understand. Prayer is what makes the word of God doable. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? Yes. If the engine of the New Testament life, if I will be able to do the word of God, because the word of God says, bless them that persecute you. How many people feel have actually naturally just felt? We just look at Stayola and say, you are, you are you're stupid, you are ugly, you are this. And Stayola just says, oh, that's so sweet. God bless you. God keep you. So I like that you'll be feeling. <laughs> Not particularly, praise God. But now, in because, because, listen, because you are now giving yourself, you are subjected yourself to prayer. Because prayer is what makes you do the word of God. I'm saying to you, the, like, there's a place of revelation knowledge, but that you will practice this thing. Bro, you pray. Mm -hmm. And people will have to pray for you. Because see, this, the flesh wants to do what the flesh wants to do. I don't know if I've noticed that already in their lives. The flesh wants to do what the flesh wants to do. The flesh will let it, let, it will logically let you think that you know what? To keep malice with your spouse is the way to go. And you have logical reasons. He didn't call me, he didn't text me. He doesn't love me, he doesn't care. He didn't do this, he didn't do that. And your logical reasons will stand in a court of human reasoning. Mm. But remember, you are set apart. apart. That's the, that is what is going to make what we are saying make sense to you. And what is going to make you uh, actually practice it? Prayer. Mm. That's why prayerless Christians are called weak Christians. Mm. Why? Because they sometimes they even know and understand the word of God but don't practice. Have you met people that can quote Greek Hebrew? They can quote the Bible. You are saying John chapter 3, they've said 16. They know by the spirit the next verse will quote. But you see their character is not matching up to what they know. Investigate their lives. It's prayer. Say I'm a man of prayer. I'm a man of prayer. I will live for. So that the word of God will work. In me. In my family. In my relationships. In my marriage. And in my world. Even for others. Rise up on your feet today. The grace of God. Lift up your hands to God. You have heard message. I've actually told you a secret. I've said to you that see, the word of God, for it to work, men will know the word and men will pray. Prayer is what gives the, it is the air conditioning where we practice the word of God. I know that I should not take malice. I know I should not be unforgiveness. I know go on and fast and pray. Why? You know the word of God, but the applicability of it, you're struggling with it. The greatest thing you can do, one of the greatest things you can do for others.
people. It's great for them. It's the grace of God that the one of God that they know would work in their life. See, think about it. People in the local church like this that hear the message and they have to make their own business How? That's what we pray. That they will do what God. Whether we are there or we are not there, the New Testament has to do this. You don't know? you know, micromanage people. Hallelujah. But we pray for them. So that they can actually do God's will. God's plan. Many things, nations, depend on the decisions of little, of little city, of little, of little Iola, of little Zika, of little Zika in Josie. Major decisions. People's lives. Drug addicts in Jamaica. Oh. You say, oh, but how is that possible? How does my life I have affected the drug addicts in Jamaica? By meeting the Dr. Angela. That's how it happens. That's how it happens. Yeah.